What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to be looking at Throne of the Tides today. This is going to be a quick plus 20 we did on stream earlier. Uh, it is bolstering and tangling week, so the pulls are going to look a little bit different. Uh, right now I'm just on my undergeared Paladin, just trying to get it up there because Paladin is very broken at the moment. And we're going to be using the Paladin for push keys later on. Uh, this first pull we're just going to lust here. Uh, usually you'd pull it with the pack behind it, but because uh, again, like I said, it's bolstering. Uh, don't pull as big if you don't have dedicated DPS to uh, target a specific um, mob. Right now we've got oracles that are doing water bolts. They're also going to do some healing, so make sure you interrupt those as much as you can. Uh, you've got a bunch of these invaders that just do melee attacks, and then you've got the um, you've got the snapdragons, which cast an ability which will uh, apply a debuff onto the target, making them take a massive bleed damage, as you can see indicated here. And also, they will target random players and pretty much chase them. Uh, you can't get rid of it unless you obviously get uh, you use a uh, Feign Death or a Shadow Melt. I'm pretty sure you can get rid of it just with a uh, Invisibility or anything like that. Or if you stun them and just run away, make sure they don't hit you too many times because the more stacks of this bleed, the worse it's going to be. Um, you'll see I'll pack later on. These are really going to hurt and you need to use something to get rid of it as a tank. Because uh, you will end up dying to that pack almost all the time. If you don't use some sort of immunity, or you don't have a, uh, a Augment of Ochre uh, using Cauterize on you to get rid of it, or if you're not a Dwarf to use um, your, your uh, Stone Skin to get rid of it as well, which Dwarf is very strong for this area. Um, yeah, we're going to kill all these, and we're going to move on to the next pack. Now, uh, these are very standard mobs, just interrupt and, you know, get rid of the, the bleeds and stuff. You've got Double Oracle here as well. Again, water bolts and healing, and then you've got this Sentinel, which is the uh, the big bad in this area, which is going to do two abilities. One is Shellbreaker, which uh, increases the physical damage, or I think just damage in general, that the uh, tank takes. And then Crushing Depths, which is the one that puts a massive absorb that slowly ticks down and slowly kills you if the, if the ability is not healed off. Uh, so as a prop paladin, I can off heal there, so I'll just chuck a word of glory in there, or I can lay on hands. Uh, but you need to help the healer out here because if you get to a certain point on fortified, it's pretty hard for the healer to just do it themselves. So being able to use a hand of sacrifice or a uh, word of glory here and there is very very beneficial for you and for the healer as well. Uh, moving on to the next pack, we've got the Ravager, which is the uh, the big singular mob in this area. You have the double snapdragons, which is going to follow people around, applying that bleed, as you can see. The uh, Ravager is going to put that barrage, which is just going to target a random player. And you need to make sure that you're stepping out of it. So try not to stack anywhere in this area. Uh, try to give yourself a little bit of room, and uh, so you don't get cleaved by the barrage. Uh, and then also, he's going to just target an area on the ground, and they just put a pool of a poison on the ground. So that, that's very easy to move out of, not, nothing really to explain there. As you can see, me and the Hunter were kind of close to each other, or in the same vicinity, so we both got hit by that. So just be very careful, especially when it's bolstering. It's double bolstered, and it's always going to be double bolstered in this specific scenario, so... The higher fortified you go, the uh, worse that specific portion of the dungeon is going to be. Um, but the bolstering wears off here, and again, two people getting hit is okay. Any more than that, it starts to get a little bit spicy. But uh, it, it, this instance, it's not too bad just because it's kind of by itself. But if you use this uh, in the next pulls coming up, if you, you, if you uh, fight that next Ravager with a bunch of other mobs, it can get very spicy very quickly, and you can die uh, quite fast. I've seen a lot of wipes in that area myself. So you're just going to click on the, uh, the, the portal there, and it's just going to um, send you ups, upstairs. Now this used to not be the case, there used to be an elevator that you actually have to wait for the jellyfish to come down and then wait for it to bring you back up, but luckily Blizzard did use, uh, did use some changes and change that into a clickable uh, button so you could just go up there instead of having to wait for RP for so long, so that's a good change. Uh, you got some invaders here to start with, make sure as a DPS you're not next to the invaders as they spawn because after a few seconds they will just attack the closest target. And if the tank is not next to them, and he's trying to pull the rest of these like I was, don't just don't be next to it. Like, you're just making things harder. <laughs> um, we're going to move in with the invaders into, again, 
a Tempest Witch, which is just going to constantly put Lightning Bolt, and uh, we'll put a debuff on a player, as well as Oracle, which is going to be the Water Bolt and the Heal as well. So you just want to be making sure you're interrupting those. Again, in a different week, you would be pulling the two Sentinels on the edge as well, but right now we're trying not to bolster them as crazily as possible, so we're just going to be pulling them separately, just being controlled. This, uh... This season seems to be, um, seems to be pretty chill in terms of, like, damage required. It's more just making sure you don't overpull and just, uh, just, just controlling and CCing and interrupting properly. So I prop pally so, so strong. Same, same with, uh, Vengeance Demon Hunter. Because they can just, they can just deal with so much of the mechanics in the, in the, in the dungeons that it just alleviates a lot of pressure from the rest of the group. So, this one's going to be a little rougher because now you have two crushing deaths going on. And if the healer puts, pumps a lot of heals into one of them, the other one's going to be susceptible to dying because they just won't have anything else. As you can see, I uh, help with a water of glory on one and then I lay on hands the other one. Now, you don't need to lay on hands the other one, but it is fine to do so. Like, I'm not... It, it's okay. Like, I'm not really using it at the moment. Like, if I get in danger, I can just use Divine Shield. I have... I have a cheap death trinket, like, I've got many other avenues of surviving myself, so it should be okay to use it there. Now, I'm going to LOS this. It's just three mobs. It looks a little bit small. It doesn't look like we're doing a lot, but it's because, again, bolstering. There's no need to rush it. This area is very, very dangerous. You just want to take your time with it. Now, again, like those I said about the Tempests, um, the Tempest Witch, they put the Lightning Bolt, but they also put the debuff on you, which is just a circle on the ground. Just move out. Don't stack on other people. Very simple. Uh, we're going to do the five pack next, which is just a smattering of everything that we've just fought. So you've got the invader, you've got the oracle, you've got the witch, you've got a bunch of snapdragons. Everything we've fought uh, prior. We're going to kill those off. <coughs> now, again, just be careful here. If you are, it, The best thing to do around these areas is to have target of target enabled. Um, just in case... Uh, two of the abilities from these mobs end up targeting the same person. If it gets to a point where they're bolstered or you have like a snapdragon on you as well, you can just get one shot just out of RNG's sake. So if you want to avoid any type of bad RNG and accidentally dying to something you can't really avoid, if you don't have any interrupts or stops up, um, you can LOS a lot of these uh, abilities, which I'll show you in a second when we pull the next set. So with this Ravager, I'm just doing it by itself. There's no need to do anything crazy here. I will pull this into the Snapdragons when it gets low, because if you're going to be pulling mobs on bolstering, you want to be pulling them at roughly the same HP. So then everything can get cleaved off at the same time. So I'm waiting for the Ravager to get low, which is about 3 to 4 mil, which is about the same health as these Snapdragons. So then when I do pull them all, they all die relatively at the same time, or like not so far apart that I have to deal with so many bolstered mobs at the same time. So right there, I pop a I pop a Divine Shield so that I can grab all the mobs at the same time as not having to deal with so many, uh, with so much um, stacks of that bleed. And then as well as the Evoker, getting a few of the dogs on them, I just popped a uh, Blessing of Protection on there to remove uh, any, any type of aggro and all the bleeds on there. So as you can see, I'm pulling these onto the side here. Our healer, marked by that triangle there, is going to be LOSing behind here if they see more than more than one ability on them. As you're ranged, you should be doing this as well. You can use any of these pillars around the room to LOS. LOS is very, very important. If you don't know what LOS means, LOS means line of sight. Uh, so the mob can't see you, you can't see it. It will it won't actually it'll actually cancel the cast or the cast will just fizzle out. So very important to do that kind of stuff on high fortified, even on high tyrannical, honestly. Uh, we're going to do these five pack, and you're going to see there's another pack of three over there. We'll come back to that later. This is very important because that three pack, you don't actually have to do that yet. You can pull that with the second boss, and it does save a lot of time because you're saving time from just doing the three pack by itself. So uh, any time you can save that is uh, more beneficial by pulling mobs with bosses is very, very important, and that's the next step in uh, progressing as a group uh, in order to in order to do that kind of stuff and uh, beat the higher timers. You want to make sure you're finding ways to be efficient rather than to overpull and kill your group. Uh, over there, it does get a bit spicy. I kind of run out of things to use. Don't really have much. 
Um, not that I remember. So I did end up proccing my cheat death, but that's what it's for, right? If you've got the cheat death trinket, you might as well use it. So here we're going to go to the first boss, which is going to be Lady Najjar. Uh, first off, immediately after you pull her, she's going to do Focus Tempest, which is going to do um, lightning Chain Lightning to players. Now this does seem randomized, so you want to make sure that everyone's kind of stacked in and not so far away, especially if the healer requires everyone to be in the same area. Uh, she'll put the geysers on the ground, which is you just dodge them, it's very simple, which is going to continuously happen in this phase. Uh, so she will go into this phase at 60% and 30%. Uh, so you just want to make sure that you're... I'm pretty sure it's 60 and 30. But um, you just want to make sure you're... Uh, she goes in there twice anyway. And um, making sure that you're pulling her as the tank, you're pulling her as far away from the middle as possible. Because you can do more damage because she has to actually get into the middle of the room in order to start casting her shield, which is makes her immune to damage. So you can get a few extra percent in there and make it a little bit quicker to phase her into the next uh, the next phase like this, as well as getting her down uh, later on. Because, uh, yeah, you don't want to tank her in the middle because then she'll just immediately go into a um, immune phase. So quick tip there. Um, it's going to summon two Frost Witches and then one Honor Guard. Make sure the tank has immediate aggro of the Honor Guard. So if, if you as a DPS or a healer see the Honor Guard spawn, just move away because it'll melee you immediately and kill you. Uh, let the tank get some aggro. Um, and then the Frost Witches just try and gather them. They'll continuously cast Frostbolt at people, slowing them down, making it harder for them to dodge these geysers. Um, and then the Honor Guard, the main thing the Honor Guard does is going to jump to a place and then do Trident Flurry, which is this, which is just a frontal. Uh, don't stand in front of it. Very simple, as you can see. And just try to group them up together. And, uh, yeah. Get them down. Once you kill these mobs, uh, the boss will return to the original first phase and then rinse and repeat. Very simple. Uh, the second ability that we didn't look at, uh, which, because I don't think it actually casted it, was Shock Blast, which is going to put an ability on a player, and, uh, that player is going to have a big ring around them. They need to move away from everyone else, and then that... Uh, that player is going to erupt, and a bunch of um, a bunch of orbs will come out of them, and you just have to make sure you dodge the orbs. Very simple, standard stuff. So at 30%, it's going to move again. You never actually get to see Shock Blast because we just kill it too quickly, unfortunately. Uh, I, <laughs> I wish we didn't, so I can actually show the ability. But uh, if you do this dungeon, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about just through the explanation. So apologies for that. But that's pretty much the fight there. We'll go back into here. Let's see if I, let's see if we actually get the shock. I don't think we will actually. Yeah, so we end up just killing the boss. Um, yeah, apologies again, not being able to show you shock blast. But uh, like I said, if one person gets the ability, they have to move out. Just move as far away as possible, and then the orbs will come out of the person. Just dodge the orbs. So once you're done with that, you're gonna walk next to this instrumental thing here. I'm not even sure what this is. It's like a conch or something. Um, click the conch, and then you'll go through into the next room, which is where you just finished all the uh, the trash mobs before. The second boss will come crashing down, Commander Ulfok. And then now you'll see we have those three mobs on the side here as well. Now, on Fortified, you kind of want to aim the mobs instead of the boss, because the mobs, if they end up staying up too long and you don't have enough interrupts, they will probably kill you in conjunction with the boss's abilities. So you don't want that to happen. But on Tyrannical, you can kind of just cleave off the boss and it's fine. Just try and make sure the mobs don't heal. If you have a coordinated group, don't heal and don't uh, one-shot someone. Because they are still three mobs and it still will kill someone if they all aim the same person. So just be careful of that. This is usually where you want your second last, so I'm just waiting right now. Everyone's got their cooldowns ready to go. As you can see, we've got meta and true shot here. And we're just waiting for lust. As soon as that's done, I'm ready to go. We're going to pull the boss towards here. And we're going to get started. So, first ability is Crushing Claw, which is going to be the big tank buster mechanic. It's going to make you take a lot of damage. So you want to make sure you have a defensive up for that, and you will have a debuff for 8 seconds. You need to make sure you keep those defensives up. Bubble Fisher is going to be your bait, so everyone needs to stand on top of each other, behind the boss preferably, to drop the puddles, uh, the purple puddles here. Now the first one usually doesn't go on the tank, that I've noticed. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to, so the tank can kind of stay where they want. Uh, but get into the habit of it, so just walk behind the boss anyway. That's fine. So the ads are dead there. Festering Shockwave is going to be the big knockback. 
Uh, if you have something to stop it, that's great, but otherwise, do what I'm doing. Go next to a wall or a pillar and then just face it back towards it and then you don't get knocked into another dimension instead of... Instead, you just get knocked into the wall. Um, and then it's going to awaken the oozes, which will get knocked back if you do damage to it. So, right now, our priest is actually just holy nova spamming in order to keep it away. Um, it's very good if you have like a, a druid or something, they can just sunfire and that, that works. Or if you have any type of AoE, just make sure someone is cleaving it in order to get rid of it and to knock it back. Preferably a ranged player. I'm using my Avenger shield procs to knock them back as well. And then you pretty much just rinse repeating this whole thing. So it's gonna, just going to be, again, bubbling fissure. We're going to stack. I'm going to bait. Festering shockwave. You're going to be next to a wall. And then Crushing Claw, which is the tank buster, which you want to make sure you have some sort of defensive for as a tank. Very simple stuff. And then Awaken Ooze again. And now, now when, when you get closer, like further in the fight, obviously the uh, the abilities will start overlapping. So you want to make sure you're pre-positioning to make sure you're not accidentally getting killed by getting knocked back into the purple staff or, you know, whatever. And um, yeah, it's, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty simple fight. The... the the worst thing about this fight, I would say, is probably the tank buster for some tanks. Um, if you're not ready for it, it can kill you very quickly, so just be careful of that. This is the gauntlet here. Oh, not gauntlet, but kind of kind of a gauntlet, I guess. Uh, you just need to make sure... You, you can, at least... At le actually, uh, you can start from the beginning where I am right now. And as soon as this first, uh, this first angler um, uses its lightning, you can just completely just uh, hold W. And you'll just walk all the way to the end, and uh, the timing should work that you won't actually get hit by anything. But all you need to do is make sure you're standing in the light-ish zone, and that's your safe zone. And the dark zone is your bad zone. If the angler's uh, light up in front of him is uh, is uh, bright, that's when you don't want to move. And yes, it will also hit you with residual. So don't run as it's going. Sometimes it will like have an after residual effect, so it will still stun you and kill you. So just be a bit careful and just be patient with it. Now here, I just walk off. I was I was I was talking to my stream before, and I was like, I'm I just died here. I don't know why I walked off. I guess I was tired, but don't do this. Just click on the <laughs> just click on the portal that you clicked before, and it'll take you down. I genuinely thought I clicked the portal, and I just fell to my death. So, uh, yeah, that's a meme right there. Uh, yeah, I, th I thought I was fine. I, I, I mean, right now, I could have Divine Shielded if... <laughs> if I if I knew I didn't click the bubble, um, <laughs> I could have just bubbled myself, but I genuinely had no idea. So we're waiting waiting for the healer to res us. Um, <laughs> while, while we're getting resed, we're going to go into the next pool, which is going to be this Watcher on the left, and then the bunch of mobs on the right. Now, with, because it's bolstering again, we're going to wait until the Watcher gets to about 60-70%, to 70%, and then we're going to pull into the mobs, or wait until the first grip. So the Watcher does two things. It's going to do Clenching Tentacles, which is going to grab absolutely everyone in line of sight. Now, remember that, because that's going to be important for later. In line of sight, and it's going to do a Shadow Smash. If you're in this Smash, you will die 100%. Now, we're going to pull them all the way over here with the rest of them. Now, there's going to be a bunch of uh, Goblin Hunters and then a Goblin Aquamages. Aquamages, you need to interrupt the Aqua Blast. They will one-shot you on a high fortified. And the Hunters just do a knockback. Uh, sorry, they, they knock themselves back, sorry. Like a disengage. And then also apply a poison on the target. Now, luckily I'm a Paladin. I can dispel poison. Um, and, uh, yeah. We, uh, so where, where I'm positioning now as well is, remember, they disengage. So what I'm doing is I'm placing them next to the wall or the pillar here. I'm facing their back towards the wall or the pillar. So then when they do disengage, they don't disengage anywhere. They just disengage into the wall. So if you are a DK, you can just kind of grip them back. If you're a DH, you can kind of chain sigil chains back as well. Uh, if you're not though, this is the best way to do it. Just make sure their back is facing the wall. So then when they do jump, they don't jump too far. So there you go. They just jump a little bit and then they come right back. So happy days. Those are all done. Remember, you're tr again with bolstering weeks, you're trying to avoid as much bolster. Uh, you're trying to avoid the amount of time they're bolstered for. So even if they are get bol getting bolstered, they're only bolstered for a tiny bit at the end. Now you got the faces, seers, and you've got these minions. 
as well. The minions are just gonna constantly cast um this uh, this ability, this psionic ability, a uh, psionic pulse, which is just gonna do an AOE. Uh, just try to chain stun them if you can. That's great. Uh, and the faceless seer is gonna do nothing but uh, two things. One, silence, which is going to be a beam. You can see at the bottom of the screen now. Don't get hit by it. You take damage, you get silenced. And also an ability, which you just need to interrupt, which is going to be Mind Flay, which just does a lot of, like, there's just a, a lot of channel damage, which is very easy to interrupt. Now, usually you'd pull this with the next Watcher, but again, I'm not doing it because of bolstering. A common theme here, clearly. Um, so then the Watcher, we're going to get, again, to like 60 to 70%. Unfortunately, the mobs come a little bit too close, so we end up not doing that, but we do have some prior damage, I think. So then, these are exactly the same mobs as before. The Watcher that does the pull and the slam, and then the uh, Silence Beam you have to move out of. The Pulses from these little minions, and then the Interrupt Mind Flay from the Seer. Very simple stuff. Standard stuff. Now we've got Double Seer here, and Double Watcher here. You always want to pull these together, because doing two mobs at, the same, at one time is never... It's never good. It's not efficient. You always want to be pulling more than one or two mobs. Um, unless they're really, really annoying mobs. So these are okay. Now I'm pulling these into the corner, into the side here. Because we have, again, common theme in the dungeon. We have a pillar near us. Now what did I say before about the slam that this guy does? It's an L. You can It pulls people in line of sight. So what's going to happen here is we're going to have a look at these watchers. We're going to have our ranged over here, and then if they want to, if they have a weak aura, there's, there is a weak aura out there which has internal timings of all the abilities of all the mobs in every dungeon, and you'll be able to time when they're about to do it. Now, you have to be very quick about it, but if you have that weak aura, you can tell when they're about to do the yoink, and you can LOS and not get yoinked in, which is very, very important for a lot of uh, ranged DPS as well as healers. Because then it doesn't stop you from doing your casts or um, or accidentally getting killed. So unfortunately, our evoker does die from that. Uh, didn't didn't go fast enough. Pretty sure an entangling came out at the same time. So that's a very unfortunate combination. But yeah, that's a little that's a little bit of a tidbit there that that you can use. As you can see, our our healer just did that. If you just noticed that our healer went over here, we had the yoink. And then they were able to yoink our uh, our hunter back out because of the quick reaction times. So shout out to our uh, shout out to our, our healer attached for that. He's actually the one that brought this up uh, brought this to my attention. So shout out to attached. But we're gonna kill these watchers. I'm gonna go into the next pool, which is just a bunch of minions here. So again, these are all just gonna do psionic po uh, psionic pulse. And we just need to kill them and make sure they don't all happen at the same time. So lots of AoE stuns if you can, knockbacks, knockups, and uh, all that jazz. Now once you kill all these, we're going to go into the third boss, which is going to be Mindbender Gersha. Now this one is a big, big annoyance on Tyrannical, because it does a lot of tank damage and a lot of dot damage. Now there's going to be a bunch of abilities here. We're going to have the Storm Flurry Totem, which is going to be a totem on the ground. Now, you can leave this totem up forever if you want, and it'll never recast it. The problem is, with the totem up, the boss is going to do extra damage to the tank, and extremely fast attack speed on the boss. So the tank is eventually going to get clapped. Now, you don't want that. So you want to be cleaving off the boss, essentially, to get it into the second phase so it stops spawning these um, totems. You don't really want to be hard focusing the totems, because you would just want to do the boss as quick as possible. So when the totem comes up, make sure the tank has some sort of defensive. And as you saw just then, Attach got a uh, our healer got a flame shock on them, which does a lot of magic damage over time. Now this happens every I think eight to ten seconds. Another one gets applied to a random player, and this does a lot of damage. So you have to dispel it. If you have a warlock in your group, use a warlock with an imp that can dispel it as well. If you have a priest, you can master spell two of them if you want to. And then you can single dispel the other ones. Otherwise, you need lots of defenses for this on self-healing. Because it does hurt a lot on High Tyrannical. Luckily, it is fortified, but it's still chunking quite a bit. So that was the Storm Totem. You saw how much more damage I took. And I had to use defensives for that. As soon as that's done, Earth Fury is going to come out. Which is just going to be basic mechanic on the ground. Dodge the mechanic. Don't get hit by it. Very, very simple. Now, the Flame Shock almost killed our Hunter just then with two ticks. Luckily, we got the, the spell off in time. 
Now, this is going to be the boss pretty much until the boss gets to 25%, which is where the boss is going to turn into, um, sorry, the, the original part of the boss is going to die, and then the mind bender that's on him is going to be the, uh, the new boss. So once that happens, you're going to see these, you're going to see these two, like, kind of, like, spheres over here with a bunch of, like, uh, plants near it. We're going to use that as an LOS point, uh, for the fear that the boss is going to do. So if you, if you see at this point, there's a storm fire totem up, and the boss is almost at 25%, just nuke the boss. Because once the boss gets to 25, he'll transition, and you don't have to worry about the totem. That's another, another tidbit. So once he's 25, it's going to go into the second, second phase. Mind Bender comes out, and then it's going to cast Terrifying Vision, which is going to be your fear. If you're a DK, you have an AMS, you have a uh, Lichborn, you can just stay in there, don't worry about it. Otherwise, make sure you go behind one of these. I don't know why I went over here, I'm just used to going over here, but you can go over here, it's fine. But just LOS here, instead of LOSing on these big pillars, because it takes a lot longer to get over there, and also there's like these little coral bits on the side that sometimes catch people off guard, and um, you don't actually make it, and you get stuck there. So just tank the, tank the boss like near this, so then everyone can just go behind it. But this area, it's very simple. It's just tank and spank. There's like these little, little like purple missiles that like hit random players. So it's not too hard to heal this. And then also you have to just LOS the, LOS the fear. That's literally it. So uh, it's a very simple last phase of this boss. Now we're going to go, uh, we're going to backtrack now. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. And now we're going to go and head over to the last boss, Ozumat. Uh, now this part is going to be the real gauntlet of the dungeon, and this part usually makes or breaks the key. A lot of people, f like, screw this up, and it is very tilting. Uh, it did get nerfed quite heavily, uh, because before, these corruptions would put such a big debuff on you, and this, these, uh, these big elementals, these sentries, would absolutely one-shot you, if you even had a few of these stacks of these debuff. But right now, we're going to pull the Corruptions. All the Corruptions do is put a debuff on you that makes you take more shadow damage. Um, and the, uh, the the pulse that the Sentry does is essentially just shadow damage. So you, the, the idea is not to have a lot of stacks of the Corruption when you're fighting one of these Sentries. But it's kind of impossible to not if you want to do this in a timely fashion. So you'll see what we do. They just use defensives and, you know, and try to get as much single target as possible so you don't kill these when it's doing its uh, cast. Uh, then you've got, again, your two Aquamages and your two Spear Boys here. So again, you want to make sure the Aquamages are interrupted. You want to make sure the Hunters are either facing a wall or being able to be uh, tanked on. So then you end up cleaving them as well. So the Swell comes in. Attached almost dies. We get a Word of Glory there just at the end, which is lucky. But we're trying, we're trying our best to just get these down as fast as possible. Uh, it does have two stacks of bolster, and we and I do have a bunch of poison. I should remove those poisons. I do, thank you. And uh, yeah, now we're using our our uh, priest shield here. Just got to make sure everyone's alive. And once these uh, sentries die, they do spawn a bunch of corruptions as well. So you want to pick that up. And now this entire area, you want to just pick up all the corruptions you can and just kill them as fast as possible. Now I do end up picking up the sentry as well. Now this is a bit of a spicy pull. Like if you can deal with this, sure. But unfortunately, when you have something like a DH in your group, they don't really have single target. They Pretty much all their abilities are cleave. So what happens is eventually, just even the, them just doing their normal rotation, things just die anyway. So you're going to get a lot of stacks. Right now, you're going to see the, the sentry starts casting, and we have 16 stacks, which is pretty insane. So this is where a few people die. I think only one person dies. But we're just trying our best to keep alive here. Yeah, only one person dies, which is our uh, our dragon boy. So we end up having some cooldowns there, which we can just nuke down the sentry before it casts well again. And then probably the one of the one of the roughest packs in here, which is going to be this next pack, which is about six or seven aqua mages. If you don't have a a paladin, a prop paladin, or a vengeance demon hunter with double sigil of silence. It does get a bit spicy if you don't have the interrupts, especially on Fortified, because pretty much one of those Aqua Blasts go off and someone's dead. So you want to really make sure you have a composition that can deal with the amount 
of interrupts needed, or at least have a lot of AoE CCs to stop um, stop this amount of cast from going off. So we're gonna walk in after we kill these uh, corruptions. And yeah, there are there are six Aquamages, sorry, so I'm gonna Divine Toll and I'm gonna kick one of them just to make sure all of those are done. And then I'm gonna start doing a CC rotation. So we've got our Fear Sigil there. And a knockback there, and everything's pretty much dead at that point. But again, this is just it's it's a 20. Things will die quite quickly for the for the group that we have at the moment. And then we got our double sentry here. Now, there are two ways to do this. Otherwise, other, uh, one way is your healer can't heal it, and it's getting a bit rough. You want to mark something with a skull, and you want to make sure you kill that one first. So then there's not double swells going off all the time, and your healer runs out of mana. Two, you can kill them at the exact same time, and they won't spawn any corruptions. So you can save maybe 10-15 seconds of uh, combat time without having to kill the little corruptions afterwards, and you can just get your healer to drink and move on to the boss. That's a little something as well, if you wanted to do that. Otherwise, you want to make sure you're backing it up right into this corner, because those corruptions at the back are going to continue to spawn this entire time. They ain't waiting for nobody. So be careful there, we're going to lay on hands our healer, because we're getting a little bit rough, a little bit low over here. And we're just going to kill these two uh, as quick as possible. Because the double swirl going off is not fun for anyone. So one of them do die before the other one, so it will spawn the corruptions unfortunately, but if you do kill them at the exact same time, they won't spawn corruptions, and you don't have to deal with, you know, killing these off, like I said before. So I'm going to let Attached uh, drink up a little bit, and we're going to do the last boss. This boss gets done wrong all the time, so make sure you are listening and paying attention here. So the boss is going to be pulled. The tank is going to be away from everybody else, because you don't want to be pointing the frontal that the boss does onto anybody. And then everyone else is going to be in their bundle up in their little area themselves. Uh, we're going to lust on the pool here. So I'll be over here. We're going to have Blotting Barrage, which is going to put three circles on people. And you just want to Venn diagram it. So two people in the front, one person at the back. Makes it very concise. Uh, overlapping the circles, but not overlapping each other. Perfect positioning there. And then it's going to immediately do the frontal, which is the Merc Spew. Don't let anyone else get hit by this, otherwise they die. Make sure you have some sort of defensive. It does do quite a bit of damage. And then immediately it's going to do Cleansing Flux. Now, you want to make sure that the people with these beams are going onto the ink on the ground. And you want to make sure that they're standing still and waiting for the ink to actually go away. It doesn't go away immediately. You need to actually wait for it a little bit to fully go away. Because if you don't fully remove it, it will expand even if it has a little bit left. And then if it expands and you lose room, this is how the boss goes to shit very quickly. Now here we have the uh, we have the deluge, which is or the putrid raw, sorry, which is going to uh, do an AOE, and then the deluge is going to summon a bunch of these mobs. We're gonna have three of sludges and two of splotches. Splotches are going to do the uh, ink blast, which you need to interrupt, and sludges are going to drop another ink pool on the ground once they die. So you want to make sure those sludges are kind of where your group positioned the other inks before if there's any left. Otherwise, you can just put them anywhere you want, and your group should be placing their new inks next to the sludge pools that just spawned now. So if we see right now, we've got the new inks coming out, everyone's kind of near the old pool, which is fantastic, everyone's doing good. So now it's all concise in one area, so then when people get the cleansing flux, they can just run over the same area instead of having to run everywhere, right? So going together, we're dodging those, perfect. And they're just coming in, cleaning up the rest of the ink. Perfect. So everything's gone now, and we're back again to the beginning. Rinse, repeat. Grabbing those mobs, killing them on the ground there. And then Blotting Barrage coming back out, and they're all pre-positioning now, ready to go to place their barrage in a Venn diagram again. So perfect execution here. Love what the guys are doing here. Then Cleansing Flux comes out again. Frontal away, as you can see, I'm on the opposite side of the boss, so then there's absolutely no way one of them gets caught in the frontal. So positioning is very key here. Gonna grab all those mobs. As soon as the boss dies, the mobs disappear, by the way, so if the boss is almost dead, just send it on the boss. Don't worry about the mobs. And then Ozomat, you're just gonna get big. There's pretty much no way of dying here, and just 
kill the boss, which is going to be this uh, Kraken on the side of the room. And there you have it, guys. Throne of the Tides. One of the most annoying dungeons this season, from a lot of viewers that have talked talk to me. They say a lot of people can't do this dungeon at all. So, uh, here you go. Hopefully this guide helps you. Hopefully you get better at it. And uh, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. I will do another video soon. That's uh, half the video is done now, I think. We've done four of the four of the eight dungeons so far. So, uh, yeah, again, if you want to see more content, please make sure you let me know. Leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, come visit me at twitch.tv slash triple bs if you want any help in a dungeon, or if you just want to ask some questions. But yeah, thanks very much, guys, for watching. Peace out, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.